you know, I love this season of the year. Uh, it's a season that lights up the world around us, at least in the northern hemisphere. Uh, it's the darkest time of the year. Uh, it's 8.30 when the sun comes up lately. Amen? Uh, but Christmas gets to pierce that darkness with light. You'll get to see some of those, like, stores putting up their lights in November, the city putting up lights and poles and houses, Christmas tree lights. You see them everywhere. It's a centuries-old tradition of putting lights out at Christmas, representing Jesus who came to be the light of the world. Uh, by the way, they used to put real candles with flames on real trees. I don't know whose idea it was. It wasn't my idea of safety. Uh, but lights were important in the first Christmas. You just saw a big light uh, at the end of that little clip. Kids, hold your, you hold your glow stick up like a star above Bethlehem. I love seeing it all around this auditorium. You're going to help me preach this sermon tonight, kids. Every time tonight I say Jesus wants to shine as a light, you're going to come with me and put this up like this, all right? Uh, light is a major theme throughout the Bible. It's the very reason for Christmas, right before Jesus was born. Jesus is, uh, m the mother of Jesus' cousin, or his father actually, said this about Jesus. He said, the morning light from heaven is about to visit us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide us to the path of peace. Those kids just sang it in O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. He's, but he's not talking about physical darkness. He's talking about personal and spiritual darkness. Everybody has dark days, dark days where you don't want to get out of bed. You're afraid to face the world. You don't feel like it's worth the effort. And you just want to throw in the towel. For some of you, uh, the holidays are the most terrible time of the year. Thank you, grumpy cat. All joking aside, I know there are people who came tonight that this is a, a difficult time of the year. But God wants to, kids, shine into that darkness. God wants, Jesus wants to shine into that darkness. First, God wants to shine into the darkness of disappointment. Some of you are going to be disappointed tonight when you see under the tree that box that looks just the right size for a new Nintendo Switch. And you're going to open it, you're going to tear it up, you're going to say, thanks, Mom and Dad, and it's going to be jeans. Yeah, thanks, Mom and Dad. Or maybe that little box that was supposed to be a ring turns out to be a watch. You didn't get... Uh, but there's disappointment all year round in 2019. Maybe you didn't get the grade, or you didn't make the team, or you didn't get the promotion. And that disappointment is difficult. It's darkness in our lives. God wants to shine, kids, into that darkness. God wants to shine into the darkness of doubt and distress. You know, those times when you feel overwhelmed, you're stressed out. You don't have enough energy or time or money. Ever felt that way? There will be probably some distress tomorrow uh, when you're ready to try out the new video game, but your sister's turn is still ongoing. Or maybe it's when the ham doesn't cook quickly enough, or the dog eats the bowl of chocolates. There's going to be some stress tonight or tomorrow, right? You might be experiencing some financial stress this season, uh, like the family who went to the bank and said, we're having trouble with our easy payment plan. Do you have an easier one? Maybe you're struggling with doubts about what the year will bring in 2020. Will there be a recession? How is the world at large going to change? Are mom and dad going to get divorced? 
Will I find a job after the military? Am I going to get into college? I find this to be a lot like the fear of the dark. If only you had a little night light to shine. Jesus wants to shine into that darkness. Kids, Jesus, good job. You're, you're getting it. Some of you are experiencing so much darkness in life right now that you'd say the light has gone out in your life. Maybe this year you lost a loved one or you got divorced. Maybe you're battling a major illness and you're in that kind of situation where you wonder, does anybody care? And if you're in that situation, if you don't get anything else I say tonight, get this, God cares. He cares about you because you matter to him and your pain matters to him and he cares about it. There's a lot of darkness, and, and above all of those things that are outside circumstances, we have the darkness that's in us. Those times where uh, we have addictions or scars or habits or character flaws or relationship issues that derail the person we want to be and the dream of the perfect life we want to live. In the next few minutes, I want to look at how Christmas can shine the light into our lives. Jesus is going to shine that light into us because just as that reality is for our lives, it was true about the first Christmas. And the, the family, Mary and Joseph, they experienced darkness on their way to a baby in the manger. And as I read this biblical account that's familiar to most of us, if not from the Bible or church, at least through Charlie Brown, you can listen for places where there might have been disappointment, doubt, or stress. At that time, from Luke chapter 2, at that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. and All returned to their ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee, and he took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was now very pregnant, expecting a child, because while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth, and laid him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. What a lousy way to start off the birth of your first child. You get to where you're going and there's no room at the inn. Could you imagine Mary saying, really, Joseph, you forgot to make a hotel reservation? Check Airbnb. What are they, they have a barn. We got to take something, right? Relational stress there. Everybody can relate to that feeling of getting somewhere and not having enough room. And you think, or even say out loud, this is not going to be a good day. And I wonder if that's how Mary and Joseph were feeling that night. And how disappointed she was to, to have to leave her mother and friends who could have coached her through that birth. To only have Joseph there to do it. How, how many times did she cry herself to sleep as she, as she slept on the hard ground on those 70 miles to Bethlehem because her body just ached? How many times was she saying, God, you, you talked to us through angels months ago, but did I just dream that up? You haven't said to anything to us in five months. Why on this, of all trips, couldn't they find a room how could they possibly lay their firstborn son in basically what is a ditch for putting food for animals? See, like our lives, there was darkness, discouragement, doubts, and stress in that first Christmas. But as we continue the story, we discover that those difficult circumstances didn't keep that family in the dark. That rather... God shone as a light 
into that darkness. The story continues, that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, shining in the radiance of God's glory. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them and said, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that's going to bring great joy to all people, the Savior. Yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. And when the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child who had heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. That's a story we never tire of hearing at Christmas. And to me, the one thing that captures my attention more than anything else is that verse right there, that Mary could take all this disappointment, all this darkness and doubt, all this stress, and yet treasure them in her heart. It tells me that she experienced in the midst of that darkness peace, the peace on earth those angels declared that God had shone as a light into the darkness of that first Christmas. And if Mary can find that peace for her life and circumstances, and that gives me hope that you and I can find that same peace. But how? How did she ponder all these imperfect circumstances and treasure what she knew to be true about God so that her heart would be filled with God's peace? One, she remembered God was with her. She remembered God was with her. I think after those four or five months of silence from God, experiencing those hardships on the journey to Bethlehem, Mary needed a reminder that she wasn't alone. The message of the angels and those shepherds showing up was a a clear signal that God was still with them. More than she realized even, because Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, was with her. Maybe in 2019 you experienced those disappointments, those doubts, those distresses. Your hopes and dreams didn't materialize. Maybe you've even asked, God, where were you when? He's been with you. He hasn't left you. And he's going to shine as a light for us by being always with us, reminding me that I never go anything through anything alone. He's with me. And she kept repeating that thought over and over. God is with me. God is with me no matter what. Two, she remembered that God was for her and had a good plan for her life. When she was visited that first time, five months before, by the angel Gabriel, he greeted her saying, you have God's favor. He would strengthen her for her trials. Every time she cried to sleep, he provided enough rest to get up and keep going on the road to Bethlehem the next day. When they had no room, he provided at the very least a place of privacy and a place to stay. God wants to shine into each of our lives, letting us know that we are loved. And he designed us with a purpose. In one of the Psalms, the writer put it this way. He said, God, thank you for making me so wonderfully. You saw me before I was born, and every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out. Do you realize God knows you 
better than anyone else in the world. Better than you even know yourself. And he has a good purpose for your life, just like Mary. Jesus is coming to earth for the whole world. Confirm that. And he shines as a light into our lives, reminding us that God has a plan for us. Three, Mary remembered that God had not let her down. When she needed that strength, she made it another mile. When she needed that place of stay, she, he provided. He always showed up. He always strengthened her. He even changed her expectations from time to time. And when it all seemed like too much, too much to have a child alone under suspect circumstances, too much to have a child in a barn, she leaned on God and found that He was enough no matter the circumstances surrounding her. Some of you came tonight even ready to give up. Don't. God wants to shine as a light into your life, into that emotion of hopelessness and restore it into a hope that surpasses understanding. So tonight, I want to be sure that you know that Jesus wants to shine as a light into your life, that he is with you, that he loves you, and he has a good plan for your life. And when life is tough, because it is, he will strengthen you with wisdom and ability to persevere because his love for you is greater than any other love on this earth. You see, he knows you again, better than you know yourself. He knows what you hope your mother never finds out you did. And he still loves you. He still has a good plan for your life. And he proved that love. He said, I have sent my son because I loved the world so much that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And so as we turn to Jesus and ask him to enter our lives, then he, he shines into our hearts. So now is a time to respond. You know, we can all relate to getting up in a dark night in a room you've never slept in before. And as you move around the walls, you're feeling for that light switch, hoping you don't stub a toe or knock something over. When you hit it, that light shines on everything in the room and lights your way. Well, receiving Christ's light into your life is as simple as hitting that light switch. You can do it right where you sit. Jesus said later in his life, recorded in John 12, 46, I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer wander in the darkness. The band is going to start coming up. I don't know the imperfect circumstances of your life this evening, but in the middle of whatever life looks like tonight, whether you're three years old or 97, the answer to finding God's peace is to let Jesus shine as a light by trusting in him, by believing that though you have sinned, Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for that sin and then rose from the dead so that you might be forgiven and might experience eternal life. That's the message of Christmas, that God shines in our darkness, that he's for us and wants to bring hope and healing to our lives. And now, at Christmas, is the perfect time to start a relationship with Jesus or, or come back to Him as, after a long absence. And you can do that maybe with a simple prayer, like the one that's going to come up here. And just saying this in your heart, Jesus, I need you to forgive me of my sins. I believe you love me and are for me and that you died on the cross for my brokenness and sin. And right now, by faith, I receive you into my life to forgive me of my sins and to take control of my life from this day forward. 
thank you for doing that and giving me your forgiveness and the gift of eternal life. Amen. If you are a follower of Jesus, I challenge you to keep saying those things Mary was thinking along those roads that, G that God was with her. He was for her, has a good plan for her, and that he'd strengthen you along the way. And as we uh, pray now, get into the candle lighting, I invite you to bow your heads with me. God, thank you for sending Jesus as the light so that he might shine into our lives and bring us peace and allow us to see through the darkness. Would you shine in our hearts tonight and throughout this coming year, in Jesus' name, amen. Now I want to lead us through our tradition at Frontline of, of singing Silent Night and having a candlelight. Now I know it's, it's still a little bit bright in here, but that's okay. It's still going to light up this entire room in a special way. But it's not just a beautiful sight. Jesus came as the light. And so as you light your candle tonight, I invite you in your heart to put your trust in Jesus. I invite you to receive the light of, of your candle as the illuminating light of Christ. You may even say in your heart or out loud as someone lights your candle that you, you say out loud, I receive Christ's light into my darkness. You can even name it. You say, I receive Christ's light into my illness, or my anger, my being bullied, my marriage, my PCS, whatever it is that's causing you doubt or stress or difficulty this year. Use this as a step of commitment to keep seeking the light of Christ no matter what your circumstances in the coming year. And we'll get to see at the end of Silent Night just how brightly God's going to shine in our lives in 2020. So in a moment, I'm going to ask three types of people to come up front and help us get this lighted started. The first group is a group that started a relationship with Jesus or restarted a relationship with Jesus in 2019. If that's you, I invite you to come down here. We're going to light our candles together at the Christ wreath or at the Advent wreath. Second, if you got baptized in 2019, either here at Frontline or at another church, I invite you to come and light your candle at the Advent wreath. And last, if you experienced an incredible breakthrough, go ahead, Alessandro, go for it, man. This guy got baptized in February. He's awesome. Just a couple of tips. Uh, don't get burned. Hold, your, uh, hold the unlit candle over the burning candle so that wax doesn't get on your hand. And we're going to stay seated throughout the entire time of the candle lighting. So again, if you are one of those three groups of people, if you started a relationship with Jesus, if you got baptized this year, or if you experienced a major breakthrough, whether in your heart, uh, in your marriage, in life, I invite you to come down now and light your candle at the Advent wreath. Come on up. Yeah, you got baptized this year. Awesome. And as you go back, light, the, light a candle at the end of your row. And we'll pass it down the rows as we get ready to sing Silent Night. Hold it over. <laughs> 